Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Hello. Uh, brethren, please keep in your prayers our brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God in Australia. It's getting pretty crazy down there. Um, apparently they have down in Australia these compliance officers as they are called where they're going around checking businesses to make sure that people are and have on their cell phones this kind of contact tracing app or whatnot. Um, I don't know what the um, repercussions of, of not having such in Australia are going to be but um, it, it's getting it's getting pretty crazy down there in Australia uh, so please brothers and sisters please please do keep our brothers and sisters of uh, the Church of the Living God in Australia in your prayers please as uh, and pray for others and other uh, others in other nations on earth um, during this time. Things are getting pretty crazy. A beloved brother and sister of ours made us aware of here in America about a month ago or so about a building collapse in Florida. Um, a big apartment building or something like that. Uh, there were all kinds of warning signs, erosion and whatnot, and one day it just collapsed. Very telling about what is uh, coming upon our nation here in America. Um, get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures on to Matthew chapter 7. Please, uh, you are expected to follow me along, okay? Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 27. Remembering again, of course, this uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 are, is the constitution, if you will, of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, Faith is only mentioned one time in the Sermon on the Mount, and it's in, in the form of a rebuke. Okay, It's all works during the kingdom of heaven. Okay, but Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 on to verse 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And what uh, our beloved brother brought up about this thing that happened in Florida, there were all kinds of warning signs. Um, there was uh, corners cut, shoddy workmanship to begin with, but there were all kinds of warning signs about this apartment thingy in Florida that collapsed. And nobody took heed. Nobody took heed. You know, people want to believe in a lie. Verse 26. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. You know, brethren, we as the Church of the Living God, uh, like yesterday was Sunday here, um, my wife and I spent the day tracting, uh, going out. We went out and traveled and uh, got all kinds of tracting and witnessing, and it was, it was great, praise the Lord. But we have to remember um, how close we are unto the catching away. Is it going to happen this year? I hope so. I hope so. Don't know, but um, we, um, we all hope that it happens very soon. 
And also, too, you've got to remember, brethren, that no one is going to be without excuse. Once we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, caught up, you know, these people who are left behind are going to be without excuse. And all you people who are going to be left behind, I pity you. I really do. I really do. And also, too, the level of Jesuitical infiltration is running rampant. Remember, brethren, there is no such a thing as a coincidence. They don't exist. What's with all the Jesuit stuff, huh? <laughs> uh, see right through you, man. What do you think? It, what What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing, huh? <laughs> yeah. The three of you, y'all working together. Because you all serve the same Lord. You know, the little G God of this world. Sosa, you know, uh, the black Pope. Yeah, that's who you all work for. You're all working together because you all have the same spirit. That spirit of Antichrist. Yeah. Yeah. Turn now in your authorized version of the scriptures to Nehemiah. To Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Chapter 6. Now I had done a video reading from Nehemiah chapter 6 about a year ago. But um, it's, it's very, very pertinent right now um, seeing how close we are to being redeemed. Uh, with what's going on right now, brethren, it literally could, the redemption of the purchased possession could happen, I believe, at any moment, especially, especially right now at this time. And the level of infiltration, the level of infiltration is alarming. And they're all pushing the same doctrine, this easy believism thing. And uh, making, um, and they're doing exactly what Vladimir Lenin mentioned. They are calling the enemy what they are and always speaking the opposite of the truth, accusing us of teaching what they themselves are teaching and adhering to. How is one saved, all you wicked, easy believism coadjutors? Because hmm? remember, um, eternal damnation is a Catholic doctrine. <laughs> and um, is Jesus, is the love of Jesus, is that unconditional? Hmm? Is there a condition to his love? Now, we, you and I are the Church of the Living God. We know this. We, we already know this, right? Right? And um, everybody's going to be saved eventually, right? Right? God loves everybody. Eternal damnation is a Roman Catholic doctrine. Pal, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised to learn uh, that you were actually uh, my dear friend from uh, England. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Got some congestion. Thinking about my dear, dear friend from England. <laughs> but see, that's what's being preached today. That's what the coadjutors, the Jesuit order, is pushing right now to damn so many people to hell after we, the Church of the Living God, is redeemed. Because, okay. If you just believe that thing, that uh, uh, God's love is unconditional, Jesus is going to save everybody, uh, eternal damnation is a Catholic doctrine, okay, you believe that Jesus died, right? You believe that he died, right? And he's like, yeah, okay, you're saved. Oh, you're saved. You just believe these things and you're saved. No scriptural repentance, brokenness, contrition, no fear of the Lord calling upon him, um, no, none of that. No, you just believe these X, Y, Z. You're saved, you see? 
damning people to hell. Ain't got time for that. Ain't got time for that. Nehemiah chapter 6. We are going to look at a very, very good example of what these coadjutors, these Jesuit devils, are doing today. Okay? Nehemiah chapter 6. Beginning at verse 1. Please follow me along. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. The enemies here that were doing work for the Lord and that the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and that through the scriptures um, his word is being preached okay when the enemy finds uh, learns that we are being obedient unto the scriptures fashioning our lives around the scriptures gets them irritated gets them irritated verse 2 that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me saying come let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do, but they thought to do me mischief. Wanting to come in and have fellowship with you right away. Because remember, unto these devils, the thing that is lacking the most is fellowship. Beware of someone who you just come across right away and right away wants to have all this fellowship with you. I take a step back and inspect the fruit because the tree is known by its fruit remember and I sent messengers unto them saying I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you and see in verse 2 the enemies want to distract us they want to distract you, brother, sister, from following the Lord. They want to derail you, sidetrack you. Okay? That's what they want to do. They want to keep you from doing the work of the Lord that he has called you on to, as the church of the living God. And this is for our instruction in righteousness, obviously. And as Nehemiah responded, I am doing a great word, verse 3. I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Be aware of that, brethren. Be aware of that. These coadjutors, like I said, they want to distract you from doing what the Lord has called you on to. And they'll bring up all kinds of questions, foolish and unlearned questions. They'll, they'll get into the genealogy thing. Okay? get you sidetracked to pay attention to them. That's what they do. And they'll use all kinds of means to get your attention. And the best thing you can do is to not give them the time of day. Because they have, they, they're there to serve a purpose, to distract you. Let's continue. Yet they sent unto me four times after the sort, and I answered them after the same manner. They keep coming. Okay? In Titus, it talks about a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. But see, they use manipulation tactics themselves. They seem to like to bring up the fact that Brother Brian Denlinger uh, made a whole plethora and slew of videos against um that steve anderson guy and they like the well brother you know brian delinger did it so why can't we you see they're justifying their own evil actions where brother brian was using uh steve anderson as an example to warn the church of the living god these guys are doing it just to cause division and strife these guys don't care about truth brethren they don't care about you. If they had the chance, brother, sister, 
They'd run you over and bludgeon you to death with a baseball bat if they could. And they're so sweet and innocent, remember? Yeah. Remember, God knows your hearts. Yeah. But they keep coming. They keep coming in different guises. Her ways are always movable, that thou canst not know them. Okay? Verse 5. Okay? Then sent Sanballat, his servant, unto me in like manner, the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. What's interesting about the open letter thing is Nehemiah was the head Jew in charge in Jerusalem. Okay? He was the he was in charge. He was not a king, but he was he was the go-to guy in Jerusalem. And when people would send letters like that, they were usually sealed, okay? As a, you know, so that whomever it was they were giving it to, they could read it, you know, open the seal, okay? The open letter in their hand was a shoe of disrespect on the Nehemiah. Very interesting. Verse 6. Wherein was written it is reported among the heathen, rumors, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. Now you yourself probably never heard of any rumors against you, right? But then again, these uh, infiltrators will come, oh, all the people are saying this about you. And even so-and-so says it, that you're doing this. Huh? <laughs> yeah, go uh, hold your place here. Go to Jeremiah chapter nine. Jeremiah chapter nine. What was it? Last year, I learned an incredibly valuable lesson about these devil infiltrators. Yeah. Yeah, I learned a very, I learned a very good lesson about it. I learned the hard way. And once you study these things and these methods of how these Jesuit coadjutors do these things, you take a step back and you see the forest for the trees, it's like, oh, wow. Wow, it's, it's obvious. It's obvious, you devils, what you're doing. It's very obvious. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 3 on to verse 6. And they bend their tongues, and they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Perfect description of every one of you coadjutor Jesuit devils, you infiltrators, asking your feigned Catholic questions. Yeah. Take heed, every one of you, of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Slanders. That's what these devils are good at. And unfortunately, you know, I personally I want to give people the benefit of a doubt. I really do. I really, I really, really do. That has bit me in the behind quite a few more times than I care to uh, acknowledge, but it is the truth. That has come back and bitten me before on many occasions. I do tend to be naive still to this day about giving people more than their share of chances, more than I should. And at this present hour, we really have to be careful, brethren. Especially when someone new all of a sudden comes on boldly on the scene and just wants to spend all this time with you. Beware. Beware. Verse 5. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. 
<laughs> they have taught their tongues to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Taught their tongues to speak lies. We're going to be looking at here, um, going to be looking at a few other sources in this video. Going to be reading this thing, uh, some of this. This is, um, as you can see, and also from the testimony of Alberto Rivera. Going to be reading out of this about some of the tactics and some of the things of these Jesuit coadjutors. Okay? And also, too, in this video, I'm going to put a link for the uh, secret oath, the uh, extreme oath of the Jesuits uh, in this video as well. Okay? So, just so you know, let's continue. But as they say, as it says here in verse 5, they have taught their tongues to speak lies. Oh, learned maybe how to perhaps sound as if they believe in the authorized version of the scriptures and are of the church of the living God? Yeah. Train themselves how to speak as if they are, but they aren't. Imagine that, huh? Verse 6. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Yeah, and what is that deceit that you refuse to know the Lord by? God knows your heart. Right? God knows your heart. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to live your entire life as a lost devil. And then you think on your deathbed, you're just going to believe and be saved, right? You're pathetic, you devils. You're absolutely pathetic. You're hoping on your deathbed confession. Because you want to go out and have all this fun, right? Yeah. Now, uh, now go to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ the King. They accused our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Hence, they accuse us night and day. Don't they? Don't you? Don't you? And now go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verses 3 on to verse 8. Uh, let's read verse 6 again in Nehemiah chapter 6. Refresh our memories. Wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, starting rumors about people, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. Romans chapter 3, verses 3 under verse 8. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. Who knows with some of these devil coadjutors that they do evil that good may come? Yeah. Yeah. God forbid. Then how shall God judge the world? 
For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Yeah, you're going to live your entire life as an evil. You're going to live your entire life against God. Do everything contrary to the scripture. Fall back, falling back on, well, God knows my heart. And then what, on your deathbed? Yeah, you're going to be like, like I said before, uh, like your emperor Constantine, right? then probably be baptized and, and say a few things, right? Just utter certain words which prove that you're of the church of the living God, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I smell something. How about you, brethren, huh? Nehemiah chapter 6, picking up at verse 7. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, let us take counsel together. So they're threatening him with, Hey, we're, we're, you know, we hear all this stuff about you. We're going to go to the king. Come on, let's talk. <laughs> we don't see any of this happening today, do we? And right here, verse 8. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. Remember, God knows your heart. For they all made us afraid saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Look at verse 8. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. Go to Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Psalm 36, verses 1 under verse 4. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. <laughs> no fear of God before your eyes, you devil coadjutors. No. Your little act, your little facades, they're crumbling. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Oh, I'm safe. God knows my heart. I can say uh, X, Y, Z. I can say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That proves I'm saved. God knows my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise. Remember, wisdom equated with fearing the Lord. Okay? Wise, someone who has wisdom, who fears the Lord. And do good. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. No, they love evil. They want to be as the world. They want the best of the world. And to every single one of you Jesuit coadjutors, you stinking devils, I truly do hope 
that you are having the best time right now under all these circumstances. I hope that your little God Sosa is rewarding you so mightily. I really do. I hope that you're living it up right now. Because this is the best you're ever going to get. So go ahead. Keep drinking that uh, alcohol there, buddy. Hope them cigarettes make you cough. Live it up. Go ahead. Because this is the best you're ever going to get. Go to Acts chapter 24 now. Acts chapter 24. Oops. Acts 24. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Let's refresh our memories in uh, Nehemiah chapter 6. Verse 8. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. Acts chapter 24, verses 13 on to verse 16. Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, which the Roman Catholic Church calls heresy, with which all these devils represent, they're working for the Vatican. They're either Jesuits themselves or coadjutors working with the order. Okay? And this... You and I, brother, sister, church of the living God. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just, the unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. And how do you do that? Again, brethren, you align your life according to the scriptures. Back to Nehemiah chapter 6. Picking up at verse 9. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hand shall be weakened from the work, which is exactly what these devils want to do. Sidetracked you with their Catholic laced questions. You need to see the forest for the trees sometimes, brethren. Sometimes you need to just step back and look at it for what it is. It's like, okay. And remember, there are no coincidences. None at all. Coincidence does not exist. You're all working together. Because you have one head, you know, Sosa, who follows Satan. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hand shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. And our prayer, brethren, sisters, church of the living God, now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Give us strength to finish well, to fight the good fight, to finish our course. Check this out. Afterward, I came onto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, Mehetabel, excuse me, 
who was shut up. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night they will come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. See, they're trying to draw you into sin. See. By saying, it's like, oh, come on. Come on. These devils are trying to draw you into sin. Because remember, if they can distract you and take you off in another direction that the Lord himself would not want you to, They've gotten a victory. If they can make you lose your cool, which is what they want to do, and that you might perhaps sin with your lips and be angry and sin, they have gained a victory. See, they're petty. They're petty. Very petty. And lo, verse 13, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin. And that they might have a matter for an evil report that they might that they might reproach me look at how Satan was before our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father in the book of Job it's like hey you've you put a hedge around Job I can't touch him take away all that he has and he'll curse you to your face so the Lord's like go ahead but don't touch him as we all know uh, read uh, Job chapter 1 and 2 okay Satan went forth and, and 1, 2, 3, 4 one fell swoop took away everything but of course Job fell down and worshipped and said uh, the Lord gave the Lord ta uh, hath taken away blessed be the name of the Lord and then Satan went before the Lord again said skin for skin yea all that a man hath will he give for his life but it touches bone in his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. See, accusation, accusation, accusation. And they want to trip you up, to get you angry, to frustrate you, to divert you. So that if you fall into their trap, and you do, you know, lose, uh, lose your temper or do something, and maybe do like say something stupid or whatever, then they'll twist it and turn it right back on to you. It's like, ah, see? Verse 14. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalot according to these their works, and on the prophetess Nodiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. Amen. Amen. Lord, don't forget the works of these devils who have made their choice and are serving Satan and hate you, all the while pretending that they are of the church of the living God and they are nothing of the sort. You do realize, I hope, you wicked devils, that you're trying to pretend that you are of the church of the living God. What, you, you, you think you're going to get away with that? Live it up, buddy. <clears throat> and ultimately, verse 15, So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month Elihu, in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of God. 
Oh, when you don't allow yourself to uh, fall for their trickery, their traps. And the Lord use you. Oh, it just drives you crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does, doesn't it? Sure does. I'll go back to verse 12 very quick. Okay? Now, in verse 10 and 11, let's read verse 10 and 11 again. Afterwards, I came onto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delaiah, the son of Mahithabil, who was shut up. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple. Because see, he's on. They, this guy was on Nehemiah's side, remember? Yeah, he was on his side. For they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night they will come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee, and who is there that be and who is there that, being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. Hold your place here and go to Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. Beginning at verse 17, on to the close of the chapter. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and, proph and prophesy thou against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes to cut it off. See. And make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? <laughs> You devils couldn't even lead a dog to go outside so a dog can do his business. You couldn't even lead a dog. And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? Hired opposition. To slay the souls that should not die. And to save the souls alive that should not live? You mean there are people who our Lord hates? There are people who have made their choice and are damned to hell because they have already chosen to serve Satan? Our brother Alexander Hartley um, has a couple of videos. Are there some people that God hates? I'm going to put those in the description box of this video. Wonderful video that the Lord did through our brother Alexander Hartley, our dear friend. I'm going to put those in the links of this video. I'll link that in this video. Check those out. Check those out. Okay? By your lying to my people that hear your lies. One of the biggest lies. God loves you. Quite simply, where does it say God loves you? Anywhere in the scriptures. You already know the answer to that. Okay? You already know the answer to that. But see, the love of God is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If you don't meet Him there, you're a child of wrath. God's wrath is upon you. Okay? Yes! You coadjutor. God's love is conditional. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
you're damning people to hell with your wicked, Jesuitical, easy believism doctrine. Shame on you. Shame on you. Let's read verse 19 again. And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lives? Just believe. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Eternal damnation is a Catholic doctrine. Are you serious? Are you serious? What are you what were you what were you trying to imply? What? That satanic soul annihilationism? Praise the Lord for the brethren that rebuked you. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows that they sew to the armholes to cut off so people can't put things through them. Wherewith ye, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, meaning run away. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad whom I have not made sad and strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Though they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations. For I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. He who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Go back to Nehemiah chapter 6. Picking up at verse 17. Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara. And his son, Johanan, had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berkiah. And they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my words to him. Okay, they reported his good deeds unto Nehemiah. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear saying so-and-so is a brother, but yet sending offensive, cursing, profane emails, which I have all of them, by the way. But that's, that's just an example, okay? I know you're very vain and you think this whole thing is about you. No, it's about all of you. Your little circle that you have working right now. You're all working together. Yeah. You're all working together. You, 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 you guys are pretty bright. You are. You are pretty bright. But you ain't that bright. You ain't that bright, man. You're all working together. There are no coincidences. One starts a rumor. The other one picks up on that. And the other one is also picks up on that through implication. Implying things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you think you're so clever, you Jesuit devils, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, hold on. 
going to show, share with you a little bit out of this. Now, um, like I said, this, uh, this video is not very structured, as you can see. Um, just just have, to, have to put this out right now. Have to put this out. Brother Brian did a video similar to this, um, which is on the channel here. Uh, but I'm also addressing it, obviously. Going to show, uh, share with you a little from this the thing of the Jesuits. I'm going to be reading this page in its entirety. Okay. Let me see. All right, let me see, let me see. Okay. All right. There you go. If you can, pause that and read it. Okay. This is what I'm going to be sharing with All right. Over the next 10 to 14 years, an intensive weeding out process takes place. Candidates are regularly tested and placed in different groups and levels. Here are the levels of the Jesuit order. First class, the professed. These are priests with SJ after their names, if they want to be known. And these are the ones, see here, that wear the... Um, the dog collar, okay, these guys, okay. Only a few of the Jesuits make it to this class. This means that the vast majority of Jesuits are not priests. They take four, four vows. Obedience, poverty, chastity, like Kent Helvin did, and special obedience to the Pope, the extreme oath of the Jesuit, okay? And these guys are the distraction, okay? These are the guys that when you mention the Society of Jesus, uh, these are the guys, these are the front people, okay? These are the ones that it's like put off this persona, this facade, that they're just sweet and innocent people and love everybody and want to bring everybody together, okay? The second class, the formed coadjutors. There are two kinds. A, spiritual coadjutors. Remember, uh, Catholicism holds to the two swords spiritual and temporal, okay? And they uh, teach you that the Pope uh, is the ruler of the world, has the right to rule the world, temporal, and spiritual, okay? Meaning he has the power to cast you into hell or in purgatory, excuse me, okay? But there are two kinds. A, spiritual coadjutors. These are lesser priests who can only hear confessions preach and teach. Temporal coadjutors. These are at the bottom of the barrel with no spiritual authority whatsoever. They work as cooks, guardians, etc. as long as they live for the greater glory of God, ad majorium de glorium. And, and look at this. Look at this picture. Cleaning out a toilet, doing something very mundane. See, a lot of these coadjutors and even the provincials that work here on YouTube, uh, they want you to believe that the Jesuits don't mess with the little people. They do. Through who? The form coadjutors and stuff like that. Okay? Now the third class. Approved scholastics. And these are the young ends. These are the sad young people who are targeted by these Jesuit devils. I can think of two of you right off the bat. These are the young ends that the Jesuits like to use as their pawns. This is a student who promises to lay his future in the hands of his superior. Wow. 
<laughs> Laid your um, future in the hands of your superior, my dear friend from England? <laughs> wow, boy. Wow. Good, good luck. Yeah, such a shining example. Who will decide after his 10 to 14 years of study where he will end up in the system, whether he becomes a Jesuit priest or a janitor? He trusts that his superior speaks for God. And you got to remember, the Jesuit has no will of their own. They are like a, a sword in the hand of their provincial. They're like a cadaver, okay? No mind of their own, just to be used, okay? Got to remember that. You have to remember that. Fourth class, still indifferent. It has not been decided where these people belong. They too must trust their superior as God. And uh, according to the Jesuit disloyalty teaching, these Jesuits see their provincial as God. Meaning to the Jesuit, Sosa is God. Not Francis, even though Francis himself is a Jesuit. Francis is subservient unto Sosa. Sosa, Arturo Sosa, the current head of the Jesuit order, is the most powerful and most dangerous man on this earth. That's who you all serve, you Jesuit devils. It has not been decided where these people belong. They too must trust their superior as God and wait up to 14 years for his decision. Their goal is an elite team of the most dedicated men in the world. And these people are dedicated. Absolutely. So dedicated that they'll go down on a sinking ship for the greater glory of God. Who will do anything for their Jesuit general without thought or hesitation. That's why they go through the spiritual exercises. Okay? to have their will broken, to have their mind messed up, shattered and reprogrammed and whatnot, okay? The Jesuit goal is to make the world serve the Pope by hook or by crook and see, to divert someone of the church of the living God away from what the Lord has called you onto. It doesn't matter unto the Jesuit. It doesn't matter. You could be a Buddhist, a moron, a Mormon, a Jeho, Jehovah's Witness, um, a practitioner of Islam, a Methodist, a Lutheran, a Pentecatholic. It doesn't matter. So long as you do not believe on the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, and most especially that you don't believe the authorized version of the scriptures, which these devils like to say that they do. They don't. They don't. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys really give a lot of strong meat on to people, don't you? Yeah. It's rat poison that you people give. Okay. So there are four classes of the Jesuit, according to the, to this. Now, going to be looking in at the testimony of Alberto Rivera. Rever Roberto Rivera. Now we are. I'm going to read quite a bit in this. Okay. I'm going to read quite a bit in this. Going to be reading from here, where my finger is. I'm going to be reading that, and all on this page here, okay? 
All right here, pause it and read it if you can, if you want to. Okay? If you can get these off of eBay, do so. Do so. Okay? Going to be reading all of this. All of this. Let me see. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Pause that. Take a screenshot and zoom in. Read it. And all of this. This would be a time when having a second camera would help, but pause it and read it. And finally, this page. Okay? Not this page. Okay? And uh, like I have said before, unfortunately, uh, Alberto Rivera did uh, keep a lot of the Catholic baggage, but I, without a shadow of a doubt, believe that Alberto Rivera is in heaven. I do believe he truly got saved. All right. I was 14 years old when the course on Protestantism and its heresies began. Alberto, the group you will work the group you will work with will concentrate on these four groups of churches. Plymouth Brethren, Pentecostal, Baptist, and United Evangelicals. As years went by, I would infiltrate hundreds of churches and, in, and, organiza uh, and organizations. Around 1550 AD, the Jesuits began infiltrating every religion and denomination. They are still doing it today in a much more sophisticated way. Thanks to the ecumenical charismatic movement and some fundamentalist churches. Ecumenical. Ecumenical. Bringing everything together. Which is what Vatican II is all about. A Jesuit smoke screen. Priests who had successfully infiltrated the, Prim, the Plymouth Brethren gave us books by Darby, Schofield, Kelly, etc. We studied their dispensational charts. These are the seven churches of the Book of Revelation. And the Plymouth Brethren are directly linked onto the uh, Puritan Calvinists that first arrived here in America. Okay. We even held Plymouth Brethren type services. The priests showed the priest showed us how to break bread on the Lord's day. When they felt we were ready, they would give us locations of churches to infiltrate and told us how to pretend we accepted Christ. See that? And and, and and look at look at this one right here. Look at that. Look at that. How did you know where these church assemblies were located? The only religion allowed in Spain was Roman Catholicism. The local priests had checklists. Because remember, they want to infiltrate and gather all the information they can. If someone didn't come to Mass, the secret police were notified. They would follow them until they found their underground churches. We were taught how to play with the children of the church members and the questions to ask the children when we were alone. Oh, thank you, Alberto. Also, we inv also when invited to dinner, we were shown how to bring flowers to the lady, to be very polite and open doors for them. Flattery. With the kisses, uh, the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. 
Also, when invited to dinner, we were shown how to bring flowers to the lady, to be very polite and open doors to them, doors for them. When along with them, to flatter them about how beautiful and charming they were. Flattery. Which is a tactic that these guys like to use. Isn't it? We learned how to play on their sentiments, feelings, by showing great sympathy when one of their loved ones died. Also, to show great interest in them when passing through any great crisis. Sound familiar, any of you? The more interesting part was how to divide a church and destroy a pastor who said the Roman Catholic institution was not a Christian church. And we all know how I feel about that. But yeah, uh, Roman Catholicism, it's Satan's church. It's Satan's religion. And if he said Roman Catholics could not be Christians, for that reason he was our target. Okay, guess what? You're a Catholic. You aren't of the Church of the Living God. And as long as you adhere to the religion of Satan, i.e. Roman Catholicism, and the teachings of the Jesuit order, you can never be part of the Church of the Living God as long as you are married onto that satanic, wicked system. You cannot eat at the Lord's table and the table of the devils. As long as you're a Catholic, you're not saved. You are not of the Church of the Living God. Oh, and here, here, go ahead. Continuing. This one, this one, here, let me, let me show you this, let me show you this, right here, okay? Check this out. In Spain alone, I helped destroy at least 19 churches. You're under arrest, crash! I let myself be caught in one raid in Spain so my name would appear in the newsletter as a heretic. Okay, you. You looking at me. Yeah, you. Not 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 you, my dear friend from England. No, not you. I, I'm, I'm speaking to one of your other brothers. Okay? Two of your brethren made videos against you. Then you were hitting me up for information. Remember? So your one brother and your other brother made videos against you. And then you came to me. It's like, see, see, they're making videos against me. So that must mean you're on our side, right? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Why, why do you think I haven't responded to you? <laughs> Come on, man. You, you got to do a little... You, you, you're going to have to do a little better than that. Yeah. Your brethren made videos against you to make you look as if you're of us. And then in your last response to me with your, you know, what's with all the Jesuits? We, dude, <laughs> come on. It's laughable. It's laughable. You're all working together. You're all working together. And you devils know, certain of you, you know whom I do believe your uh, provincial is. Can't prove that. But you, you guys know who I think your provincial is. And we'll leave it at that. I also got a personal letter from the pastor of that church 
recommending me as a faithful and trustworthy Christian. <laughs> he didn't know that I was responsible for the raid and his being in prison. I was 17 years old at the time. With that pastor's letter, I was accepted into a Baptist church in Venezuela. The institution sent me there to infiltrate and then transfer to a larger interdenominational theological seminary in Costa Rica. My mission was to destroy the pastor, the church, and the seminary. I was to get as many names as possible and send them back to the Vatican and Rome which is one of these things that these coadjutors are doing. They want to meet as many of us as they can and give all that information back onto the Vatican. Why all the names, Alberto? They are placed into the huge computer for the Holy Office. Wait a minute. Are you saying the Holy Office that ran the Inquisition is still in operation? <laughs> yeah, still is today. Absolutely. They have the names of every Protestant pastor and the names of every church member in the world, including Roman Catholics, in that computer. That is why when um, they threatened me, they threatened Brian Denlinger. Yeah. It's, it's not an exaggeration, brother, sister, um, when it is said that the Jesuits know who you are. Because that's their job. To get as much information as they can. Will it be used against them in the future? Absolutely. If they stand against the one world super church that Rome is trying to build. And those, are, and those other enemies inside the institution who oppose the Roman Catholic charismatic movement will be put to death. You mean a new inquisition? Of course. And it has here, when the Roman Catholic institution gathers all the Protestant churches together under her control, which is the point nowadays. Absolutely. She is the great whore prostitute of the 17th chapter of Revelation. The tribulation saints, that, that's what it says here, will be put to death by her. These will be occult murders involving the black mass. And it has a quote of the scriptures here. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Revelation 17, verses 5 on to verse 6. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes, it won't be long. Now, Back in, now, back to how I destroyed the Baptist church in Venezuela. One half of the church believed the Roman Catholic institution was a Christian church. And I would tell them this. Oh yes, I have many relatives in the Catholic church who love the Lord and believe and are saved Christian believers. It is a Christian church. If you're Catholic, you're not of the Church of the Living God. If you're Catholic, you're not saved. It's that simple. It's that simple. Okay? And if you got someone, okay, a babe, a babe, a novice, who was just recently saved by our Lord. It's like, what about Catholics? What about Catholics? But someone who has been claiming to be saved for many years, and it's like, Oh, I got many good friends who are Catholics. Oh, yeah, exactly this. Beware of that. Those who don't believe this are causing tremendous division and damage to the body of Christ. 
Many have been destroyed in their own Christian faith when pastors attack them. It causes all kinds of confusion, distortion, and dissension. It must stop. We must preach love. <laughs> ah, like God's love is unconditional. That uh, eternal damnation is a Catholic doctrine. Come on, buddy boy. <laughs> uh, and right here it says, these are Jesuit, Jesuit phrases. Sound familiar? Then to the pastor and those backing him, I would say, Oh, pastor, you are right. The Catholic Church is not Christian. I've suffered at their hands in Spain. They hate Christians. My dear pastor is still in prison. You must cry out against it. Look at my name in the newspaper. They called me a heretic. Look at this. The, they attacked me too. And look, I even made a joke of a video uh, kind of poking back at them. I'm on your side. <laughs> oh, oh, by, by the way, there, buddy, um, you are wasting your time. Um, uh, you email me, um, it's going to be blocked. It's been, we're, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time, okay? While the Baptist pastor was getting me into the interdenominational seminary, we started a rumor. Oh, didn't we read something like that in Nehemiah already? Yeah. Uh, we started a rumor that he was having an affair with an 18-year-old girl. How terrible. The poor child. She was a Catholic plant. She told the deacons who opposed the pastor that she wanted to confess that she and the pastor had an affair. The pastor was innocent. His wife divorced him. The church was destroyed. And I moved on to my next assi assignment. Now again, Brother Brian did the uh, video covering these very things. I'm doing it as well. Uh, Brother Brian did not in his one video um, go through uh, Nehemiah chapter six, but you know, I, 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 you know, building on another man's foundation, I, I get it, but this has to come out right now. So now I'm going to be reading this to you. Uh, okay, pause that and read it. Okay. I should have done that as I was going, so beg your pardon. So. Before you get into that, Alberto, is there a set plan for destroying a strong man of God who will not compromise? Yes, here are three of the most important ways. <laughs> Discredit him? <laughs> Isolate him. Death by various means. Isolate him. It says here to be left alone without any friends or support, trying to turn everybody against him. Hi. Remember, God knows your heart. Yeah, and you've been a Christian for 25 years. Yeah, yeah. And you got out of prison when? 2011? Oh. Why do I keep thinking about 2009 for some reason? <clears throat> Pick your part. Number one. Destroy his reputation by lying about him. Oh, kind of like what they were doing in the Hamaya, huh? Twist, <laughs> twisting something he said, making him look like an enemy of the country to get him in trouble with the officials or frame him with a woman. 
she could be planted as his secretary to have an affair with him. Once we had a pastor called to a home late at night. On the way, we had a woman in distress on the side of the road. He stopped to help. She screamed, rape, tore her dress, and her partner photographed them destroying the pastor. Government agencies or police investigate him. Government agencies or police investigate him because he was accused of anything from pushing drugs to income tax evasion. When he proves his innocence, it's too late. The news, the news media has already made him look guilty. And what's very scary about what he's talking about, if you read the Secreta Monita, that's exactly what they say they will do unto their own that leave their order. When you read the Secreta Monita, okay? The secret instructions of the Jesuits, okay? I have a link for that, but apparently the link doesn't work. So, got to find a new link to put in there. So, But anyway, I'm continuing. His credit can be messed up. Because who controls the banking system? The Jesuits. Like through credit cards. Everybody is told by everybody is told but him, putting him in a mess. Later they apologize for the mix-up when it's too late. All this is to make him look bad. Secret phone calls accusing his wife or children of obscene acts. These are only a few things to make him look bad. By now he is considered unreliable and branded as a liar and a thief. Sound familiar, people? I, I personally, I've never encountered any of this before. <laughs> you're Christians, though, remember? Yeah, you're all Christians, yeah. God knows your heart, remember? Just believe! <laughs> silly. Number two. Isolation. And it's so ironic because... Many are trying to get a hold of me. Interesting. A letter writing or whispering campaign gets started saying he is too controversial. He is a troublemaker. Those opposing his stand call him an enemy causing division. He's against unity. Yeah. He's not showing God's love. <laughs> yeah. He has his own strange doctrines or beliefs. He is left alone without pastor friends. He has his own strange doctrines and beliefs. Mm. A new lie is spread saying he had a nervous breakdown, so everything he says is unreliable. <laughs> Remember when you sent me that email about you've talked with several other Christians and they said I was crazy? An idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. Uh, you match this perfectly. You do. You all do. You coadjutor Jesuit devils. This is what you do. These are not the actions of someone of the Church of the Living God. A new lie is spread saying he had a nervous breakdown. So everything he says is unreliable. Most of them give in and compromise. It is easier than facing the heat. Isolation is used to force him out of the ministry. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. My God, my Father, is the one who is in control of this. Of what is being done here. Not you. If 
I had one subscriber or zero. One view, a thousand, or whatever. I will obey and do what the Lord tells me to do. Number three, death. The last resort. When he believe he has a call from God and will not compromise under all this pressure from other pastors, friends, and family, then strange things happen. He is hit by a car in an accident. He goes to the hospital. Some nurse pulls the plug on his oxygen or there is a mix up in medicine. He gets complications and dies. He can die of food poisoning or be fed mind-changing drugs, putting him, in, putting him in a mental institution. He can have a mysterious fight with a stranger who knifes him in the dark or a contract is placed on him for assassination by a bullet. As you can see, we are at war. Note, only deadly technique is to only deadly technique is to produce a double who looks like the victim. Whoa, oh, excuse me. One deadly technique is to produce a double who looks like the victim supplied with identification papers using his name as some have actually done to me he deliberately lives a wicked life forges papers ruining his credit and destroys his reputation we are at war ephesians chapter 6 ephesians chapter 6 Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And of course, ah, uh, Uh, what, one second, brethren, before we continue. Sorry about that. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 4 on to verse 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal like the Jesuit orders are, because they're all about flesh. You want a, you want a good way to draw, uh, to make a Catholic uh, manifest himself? Attack the flesh. Because remember, to the Catholic, the flesh is sacred. Their little pucarist cookie. And in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3, okay? Sin has been condemned where? In the flesh. Sinful flesh. Our Lord himself says, the, uh, this, um, It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. That God was manifest in the flesh. Okay. Um, in the likeness of sinful flesh. Yeah. Attack the flesh. That'll drive out a Catholic real quick. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. We don't war after the flesh. This is our weapon. 
sword of the spirit. Why do you think these devil coadjutors can't teach anything? Why do you think all they can do is smear campaigns, uh, 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 discredit him, isolate him, death by various means? That's all they got. That's all they got, brethren. Continuing. Okay, let me. Oh, oh you already saw that, but uh, now this page I'm going to be reading. Okay. this page the Protestant seminary I was to destroy was located in Costa Rica it was an it was interdenominational two beautiful girl two beautiful girls were assigned to help me both were from a Catholic youth action group posing as fundamental evangelical born-again Bible believing Christians Carmen was to be my girlfriend in the Bible college Marie was assigned to destroy pastors and introduce sex among the students. Isn't that something interesting, huh? To prove I was anti-Catholic, I would argue in front of other students with the Jesuit priest who came to the Bible college. Did those Jesuits know who you were? Oh yes, it was all an act. I reported everything about the school to those priests. In turn, they passed it on to the Holy Office and the Vatican. I caused unrest among the students by going against the strict rules of separating the boys from the girls. I would hold hands with Carmen. What is happening to the school? Well, I never. The lady teachers were missionaries and single. They were outraged. I set up a few handsome Catholic boys posing, posing as Christians, oops, posing as Christians to seduce the younger lady teachers. I visited the girls' dormitory after hours. Pick your pardon, brethren. One night, Carmen and I allowed ourselves to be caught on the grounds of the girls' dormitory. She was in her nightgown. All the girls are doing the same thing with other male students. Disgusting. Oh my God, how did this happen? I created a scandal in the newspapers. A Jesuit priest told the story. The college was shaken. It was branded as a place of corruption. I dressed as a slob, always late. I started fights with the teachers and then accused them of, of not having Christian love. You're late again, Alberto. Stop picking on me. Why are you always persecuting me? You sound like a priest. Call the enemy what you are and always speak the opposite of the truth. At every opportunity, I convinced them that there were many good Christians in the Catholic institution and that the Catholic schools were best because of discipline. No cover-ups, never a scandal. Yeah. Marie had been busy. Many of the 17 students she had seduced had been expelled. Now was the time to work on the pastors. When I saw a huggy, when I saw a huggy, kissy Christian church and a pastor who would often touch Marie and watch the way she walked, I would tell her to destroy him. Oh, pastor, I can't stay away from you. Gulp. Three pastors fell. Oh, now we're almost done. I'm going to be reading this page. Go ahead, pause that and read it. This page, and then we're going to be done. All right, let's get back to this. 
Three pastors fell, a Methodist, a Pentecostal, and a four-square minister. We would demand they stop being anti-Catholic or else. The mission was successful. All three pastors became ecumenical. They started only preaching about the love of God. They would never say anything that the Roman Catholic, they would never say any, they would never say again, excuse me, that the Roman Catholics were going to hell, all according to our instructions. And yes, Catholic, you don't get out of that system and the Lord don't, and the Lord save you. If you don't get out of that, you're going to hell. The coming together of all churches ultimately joining with the Roman Catholic institution, ecumenical. In the Bible college, the last straw was when I talked, talked the students into a three-day hunger strike to improve conditions. Again, it broke in the news. The school was at the point of going under. The Catholic priests were demanding it be closed. It's a tool of the devil, they claimed. Alberto Rivera, you are under arrest. When the school officials tried to get me sent out of the country, the Vatican, through the government of Spain, claimed I was an army deserter. I was removed before they could discover I was a Jesuit. Interesting note, today the Bible College is totally ecumenical, working very closely with the Roman Catholic priests. Alberto, why did those girls seduce those pastors? It doesn't make sense. It's totally wrong. They did it for two reasons, Jim. They were defending their faith by destroying their enemies and making points to get out of purgatory. When you put that into the equation, is that why some of these devils are so adamant and so... Um, Relentless? Makes you think, doesn't it? The Roman Catholic system replaced the Bible hell with purgatory so they could have their priests and sacraments. I don't understand. The Bible tells us, tells us those who die in their sins are lost forever in the lake of fire, hell. The scriptures say that, okay? Uh, eternal damnation is not a Catholic doctrine. Dear coadjutor, no, no. That's what the scriptures teach. I don't understand. The Bible tells us those who die in their sins are lost forever in the lake of fire. Hell. In 593 AD, Pope Gregory I initiating the teaching of purgatory as a temporary place of purification, suffering, for those who die as Roman Catholics. The Council of Florence made this official in 1439. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever Revelation 14, 11, also Revelation 21, 8. How about, brethren, how about we go there? Revelation chapter 21, okay? Revelation chapter 21. <clears throat> uh, beginning at verse 6, on to verse 8. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Um, if you have a set of scriptures that, that are red letter, that's our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Mine doesn't, because it's a Cambridge. Okay. But the fearful and unbelieving, and abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, 
and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay? The second death. Eternal damnation in hell. Okay? If someone goes to hell, there's no second, second chance. It's all over. But when you've got them believing in purgatory, and that you can get their burning souls out of there by your special connections or influences, then they'll do whatever the priests ask them to do. Or pay whatever the priests ask them to pay. Mary and Carmen believe that what they did gave them special grace, which means they'll spend less time and suffering in purgatory than people would kill if necessary? Yes, the monks and nuns who murdered people during the Inquisition did it to get out of purgatory. It is a powerful weapon of fear to control the Roman Catholics. And see, these people are afraid. They don't fear the Lord. They fear men. They fear their God, Sosa. The head of the Roman Catholic Church. The true head of the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Yeah. Brethren, be aware of these things. Okay? The, these are the last days before the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The end is coming for us. When? I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Even so, come Lord Jesus. But uh, pay attention to these uh, little things, brethren, that you will run into with these people. We as the Church of the Living God, we want to give people a chance. We want to extend our hands. We do. But remember, it's those who work for the Jesuit order are usually going to be the first ones to accept it. So, that's going to be it for this video. Um, like I said, this was a little, uh, little impromptu. Got quite a few videos I'm going to link in this. And um, take heed to these things, brethren. Be aware that we are in the last days that the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble could happen at any moment. Be aware of these things. And be aware of these coadjutors bringing in their Catholic doctrines, doing, deflecting, calling the enemy what they are, and always speaking the opposite of the truth, looking to distract you, and doing anything they can to discredit you, okay, to lie about you, to plant people in your lives, smear campaigns, the whole nine yards. <laughs> so, thank you for watching this. If you do, please keep our brothers and sisters in Australia in your prayers. The authorized version of the scriptures, Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter four. Beginning at verse five. But watch thou. In all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, 
and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also? For he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer no man stood with me. But all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Salute Priscilla and Aquila, and the household of one Sophares. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Milton sick. How come Paul didn't heal him? Hmm. Do thy diligence to come before winter. Eubulus greeteth thee, and Pluton, and Pudens, and Pudens, and Linus, and Clodia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. And we will see you in the next video.